Hello and welcome to my object oriented design video series. I'm Professor Chris Ferguson. The goal of these videos is to teach students the concept and theories that make object oriented programming a powerful problem solving paradigm. Now I know what you're thinking. Design? Concepts? Theories? Bah! How boring. Hang with me. To make it much more interesting, the examples I will use will cover, wait for it, video game design. That's right, instead of boring bank accounts or geometric shape examples, these videos will focus on design of multiple characters occupying multiple levels of a typical shoot 'em up game. This is a key. A bad programmer looks at a game and goes, haha, <laughs> cool explosions. A good programmer looks at a game and wonders, how is that done? How do I track 20 characters with different shapes and different movements and weapons and yes, different body shattering explosions? How do I figure out how those programmers wrote that game? Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it is the essential ingredient of a good programmer. Wanting to know how things work is the only way to master programming. Here in these lessons, we will look at how a game manages or programs so many different characters with so many different body shattering explosions when they meet their inevitable doom. Good design is the key to good programming. You have to know how you're going to program it before you do the program. I often use this example of a jigsaw puzzle. When you want to start a jigsaw puzzle, you could try to fit individual pieces together, or you could divide the pieces into groups and solve the individual groups, matching all the edge pieces together first before attempting the rest of the puzzle. You design how you're going to solve the puzzle before you start putting it together. You design good software before you start writing it. Let's start with what is an object. In simple terms, for our game design, each enemy, each character that we will battle is an object, be it a zombie, a tiger, or an alien. If it is trying to kill us, and we're trying to kill it, it's an object. In technical terms, each object encapsulates two main components, variables and methods. Part of the problem in learning any new programming topic is different terms are often used to describe the same thing. I prefer the terms variable and methods to describe what is in an object. Others use the terms properties and actions, which basically mean the same thing as variables and methods. In real simple terms, an object contains data or information and executable code. Here's where the design comes in. Each enemy we face in our game is an object. First step in designing an object is two simple lists for our two components. List number one. What an enemy is. What information best describes an enemy? What variables do we need to put in our object to describe our enemy? Things like an X position and Y position, their coordinates in two-dimensional space. A width and a height, we need to know how big this thing is and a status variable. Is this object alive, dying, or already dead? <clears throat> the variables are properties describe what the object is. The information that is essential to describe the thing the object represents. The above is just a short list to get us started. It is the variables or properties of our object. Later we'll add more. <clears throat> I need to know where to shoot and be able to calculate if my bullet hits the target. These variables or properties allow me to do that. And every object that represents an enemy on the screen must have this information. The second list I need is what does an enemy do? What actions does an enemy object perform? Methods like move position which will update the position of the object on the screen, or fire weapons, which will shoot a gun or swing an axe or throw a punch, 
Update status. Each energy object starts it with full health and degrades as it takes damage and dies when that damage reaches a threshold. I need a method that allows me to change the status of an enemy object. So when I blast it through the gut, it dies. <clears throat> the methods or actions describe what an object does. This is the executable code that will move the object or initiate attack and since we're trying to kill it, it must track its own status, degrading as it takes damage and eventually dying. Before I move on, I want to reiterate that the variables describe what the object is. The methods are what the object does, and the two components are very related. Obviously, the move position code takes the current X and Y position as input and changes their values so the enemy is drawn in a new location. The methods use the variable of the object as input and output. Let's say an enemy object can only punch. When fire weapon is called, it will look at the health status of that enemy and inflict a lot or a little damage depending on the health of the object. What is a class? A class is a programming construct used to create an object. Just like a blueprint is used to build a house, or a recipe is used to bake a cake, a class is used to create an object. A class is the blueprint or definition for an object. To flip it the other way around, an object is an instance of a class. Another way to tell the difference between a class and an object is an object is a runtime entity. If the game program is running and the enemy are moving about the screen, those are objects. If you are programming and typing code into the editor, you are working on the class. When the program first starts up, when it's run, the class is loaded into memory and it's used to create the enemy objects. Just like a blueprint is used to create a house, the enemy class would be used to create enemy objects. Here is what our enemy class slash object will contain. This is in what's called simple UML, our universal modeling language. At the top you'll see the name of our class, enemy. In the middle box you'll see the variables or the properties of the class slash object. The x position, y position, width, height, and status variables. Again, this is information that describes the object. And finally, in the lower box, you'll see the move position, fire weapon, and update status methods. These are the actions an enemy object will perform. Now, this is just the start. More will be added as we progress. Are you getting the picture? If you're playing the game and you enter a room with three zombies, one werewolf, and two vampires, there are six enemy objects in computer memory. Each object's X position and Y position variable will determine where they are in the room, where they're located, and the status variable will determine if they're moving or crumpled up dead on the floor. Happy hunting! End of part one. Let's move on to part two of this video series.